Your friends suspect that your wife is a ghost, they try to do anything to prove it to you, you can't see it since you are in love with her, but what would you do if there's really something wrong with her? This, is P. Mock. The movie begins with the pregnant knock, just walking around a chalet house when she suddenly feels pain in her womb and blood streams down her leg. Knock falls down the floor and tries to call for help. But she is frail to be heard. Then, the scene transitions into a combat medic, Ter, melancholy telling his comrades that they might lose the war. Puak, slaps Ter for being negative. Suddenly, the medic brings Mok, screaming in pain because of a minor injury. Despite his injury, Mok fills the room with hopelessness, but Puak steps in and uplifts everyone to use their swords to fight until death. The troops courageously charge against the enemy, forgetting they have guns, getting almost everyone shot. Subsequently, the group survives the war and is now going to Max House at Prakano. It is now night, and they just arrived at Max House. He excitedly looks for Nock, Nock suddenly hugs him from behind. Nock teases Mok for a bit before informing Mok of their child. Mok carries his boy while Nock tells him that she named him, Dang, Mak's favorite name. Afterward, Mok introduces Nock to his friends and then offers his auntie's house for them to stay until the war is over. Puak comments on Nak's beauty before leaving. The next day, while Puak scolds Shin for imitating the chirping of the birds, waking them up, Mok calls them to get to the market. Following that, Mok goes to Auntie Preek's liquor store and wakes up the drunken woman. Mok asks for a job, but when she recognizes his face, her mood immediately changes. Preek starts to blabber about Nak and his kid, telling him that he should look between his legs, but then her son, Ping, stops her mother. That night, Auntie Preek's lifeless body floats in the river. The following day, while they are helping Mok rebuild the stairs because the villagers shunned him, Mok instructs Ter to get the axe. Ter lazily climbs up only to see it in a dilapidated wreck. Ter scaredly approaches Nock, cooking, and looks between her legs. Nock looks at him, confused, so Ter uses the axe excuse then leaves. After that, Ter informs Shin that he did the legs thing but saw nothing, confusing Shin. Ter then leaves to take a dump in the backyard, where he smells something stinking. Ter looks down and sees a ring, exactly like Nax, from a decomposed body. He immediately gets up and returns to Max's house knocking over a bee's nest on his way. Ter scaredly informs them about the body behind the house, but they cannot understand a word because of the bee's sting, he then sees Nock, wearing the same ring as the corpse, and realizes she is a ghost. Nock approaches them, so Shin and A ask her to use herbs to heal the stings. As soon as Nock leaves them, Ter finds a paper and dip pen beneath the house and writes that Nock is a ghost. He returns to his friends, who are shocked to see what he wrote. Suddenly, the rain starts to pour, so Mok calls his friends, only to see them looking at a piece of paper, unmoved. Mok approaches them and tries to see what it is, so they quickly hide it from him, but Mok persistently gets it. Mok finally reads the paper, shocked to read it, so they immediately make an alibi and leave. Later that day, Ter and Shin go to Mak's house to inform him about Nok while A and Puak stay at the guest house. Seconds later, Ping asks for A and Puak's help to slaughter his cow for Auntie Preek's funeral. He informs them that after Auntie Preek's encounter with them at the market, Nock killed her. A and Puak immediately leave to save their friends. Meanwhile, while Ter is about to reveal Mac's wife, Nock suddenly appears, stopping them. Then, A and Puak arrive, wet, and randomly compliments Nock. A whispers something on Ter's ears, so he quickly piles on Puak's compliment. While Mock is happy about that, Nock looks at them unfazed and suggests eating at their house. Following that, the four of them sit quietly, scared, while Mok enthusiastically offers them disgusting foods. They make an alibi, but Nok gives Ter a deadly stare, so he eats the dried leaf, shocking his friends. Ter gives the dried leaves to A and Puak, who reluctantly eats them, while Shin reluctantly eats leaf with worms. They almost puke from nausea, while Mok quickly gets Dang and lets Shin carry and kiss his kid. The four then, signaling each other, but Mok wrongly thinks they want to play charades and invites Nok to play with them. While playing, Shin gets the word dead from Nock and connects it with the first word. The guys quickly celebrate but then realize they revealed that Nock is dead. The three of them stop while Shin continues to celebrate, confusing Mok and angering Nock. They quickly make an alibi and leave Mok wondering. They get on their boat, but then, their boat starts to circle, panicking them, while Nock threatens them to mind their own business. Finally, their craft starts to move, and they hysterically paddle away. Following that, Mok confronts them for believing that Nock is a ghost. 
It turns out that Ping lied to the townspeople because Nok rejected his interest in her while Mok was in the war. The four of them try to convince Mok, but he is too angry and orders them to leave the house, and goes. Subsequently, Mok and Nok go to a carnival, with Nok wearing a ghost mark to hide her face. The lovely couple enters the haunted house, while Mak's friends observe from afar. Ter then puts out the consecrated rice he got from a monk. Meanwhile, while Nok is calm inside the haunted house, Mok is freaking out upon seeing the monsters. Suddenly, the guy kidnaps Mok and tries to leave, but the door is stuck. Nok realizes Mok is missing, so she looks for him, only to find the four pretending to be the monsters. Nok scares Shin for a bit before leaving to find Mok. Following that, they carefully try to escape when they stumble into a staff member who wrongly thinks they are personnel. The crew invites the guys to go home when he talks to Nok, thinking it was a costume. Upon mentioning her name, the four starts to shake from fear, but when she stretches her arm to reach Tear, they scream as they break the walls to escape. In the forest, the four frees Mok, who is angry because of their behavior. Tear tells him to look between his legs to see that Nok is a ghost, but Mok says he already did and saw nothing. Mok insists that Nok is not dead yet and leaves them. After that, while they search for Mok, they see a trail of blood on the leaves and hear someone calling for help. They follow the voice and see Mok in pain because his wound opened again. Puak and A wonder why it has not healed yet, while Tear and Shin connect the dot and think Mok is the ghost. They approach Mok and forcefully open his bandage, revealing his ring finger empty. But then Mok shows his ring and his necklace, Tear immediately throws the holy rice at Mok, making him scream in pain while the four of them run. Later on, they decide to save Nok from Mok, feeling blamed for letting the dead live with the living. Shortly after, Puak excitedly looks for Nok and apologizes for their behavior towards her. Nok forgives them and asks where Mok is, so Puak quickly lies to her, saying that Mok sent them to take her to safety because the war has gone too dangerous. Still confused, Nok leaves with them. Following that, the boat starts to sink, so they quickly throw away their belongings, but the water keeps coming in, so they decide to toss the paddles too. The craft stops falling, but without the paddles, they cannot move. Suddenly, Mok appears on the shore, scaring them. Mok then walks towards them, frightening them even more, but then he disappears in the water. While the four look around, Nok calls her husband, who emerges from the water, crying for help because of a muscle cramp. At first, they are skeptical about assisting him, but they later realize that he is telling the truth. Mok immediately castigates them for leaving him behind, but Ter asks why he screamed when they threw the holy rice at him, so Mok shows the rice stuck in his wound. Then, the boat starts sinking again, panicking them, so they rapidly paddle with their hands. But Tara stops, confused about whose body is they found in the backyard. Unexpectedly, A drops a ring identical to Mok and Nax, so Tara realizes that A is the ghost. Tara quickly kicks A off the boat and returns paddling but soon realizes it is pointless. But then, Nok gives them a paddle, so Tara quickly uses it but not long after, he sees the other paddle floating away from them. Tara then stands up and looks between his legs, but their faces are on the way. He then decides to sing their marching song, and the three confusingly participate with him, revealing the ghostly face of Nock. Tara screams in horror and announces that Nock is a ghost when she suddenly stretches her arm to reach Mok, causing them to jump off the boat. Petrified, the three swims to the shore, while Shin stays on the boat with Nock, not knowing how to swim. But then, Nock approaches him and holds his head, frightening Shin, who shockingly swims like an expert to the shore. Mok refuses to leave Nock, so they knock him out instead, carry him and leave. Subsequently, Ter, Puak, and Shin scarily observe the temple while the monk is praying in front of them. They each hold a string connected to the thread surrounding them. Then, Nock opens the door, frightening them, but the monk calmly handles the situation and throws holy water in rice, which turns out useless because of their stupidity. The monk then assures them that they are safe inside the string when Mok accidentally kicks him. The lights go out, and when it returns, the four find themselves tied to the strings, while the monk quickly escapes through a window. Nok then approaches them, so they immediately walk to the other side, where A is standing. They quickly back up, and Ter realizes that Puak is still wet from the holy water, so he instructs the two to push Puak towards A, resulting in two accidental kisses. The three realize that A is not a ghost but is still confused about how A got the ring, so he explains that he stole the ring off the corpse to gamble. Ter and A apologize to each other while Puak scolds them, forgetting that Nok is still there. Shin informs them about her, so they quickly look back and scream in horror as Nok approaches them. 
They attempt to leave, but all the doors and windows are stuck, so Ter reasons with Nock that the dead cannot live with the living, angering Nock. She screams at them, then the lights go out again, and when it returns, she disappears. They look side by side, looking for Nock when Puak feels something dropping from above, so he quickly looks up and sees Nock hanging upside down. They again screamed in horror while Nock could only look at his wife. They start to blame Nock for killing Auntie Preek, but Nock explains that she was too drunk and drowned in the river by herself. She then asks why they keep interfering with her, and Mock argues that Nock cannot be with him because she is dead. But Nock insists that Mock is with her, alive or dead, and stretches her arm to reach Mock. Instead of running away as the four did, Mock walks towards her, crying. Rather than killing Mock, Nock wipes his tears and realizes that he is afraid of her. Regretful, Nock apologizes for lying and being selfish and tells Mock to carry on once she is gone. Wiping his tears, Mock confesses that even though he is a fool, he knew that Nock is a ghost all along, shocking everyone. Mock then explains that he had suspicions when they played charades, so he looked between his legs while Nock was sending off his friends. He pretended that Nock was still alive because he was more afraid of living without her than seeing a ghost. The guys look at the couple, moved by their love for each other, while Mock kisses Nock. The film ends with Mock and Nock continuing their married life. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.